Hello and welcome back to Adventure All The Way. I'm Emma and I'm a mum of three from the UK. And this is another video in our adoption series. Um, we are not an adoption channel. Um, we are just vlogging our experiences through the adoption process as it happens. Um, just to share with people who are thinking about it and just want to see it firsthand as we go along. Uh, we're also doing it because we have a big troop of loyal subscribers who love to hear what's going on in our lives and we want to be able to look back on this ourselves as well in the future. Um, we want our children to be able to look back on it as well. So, we have received the register of interest forms. Um, I was having a bit of a, a bit of a, a hissy fit, um, I suppose, um, just printing more things off, um, because it had been a week and a half and we still hadn't heard anything from them. Um, and I was like, oh, why aren't they replying? Why aren't they sending? Um, why aren't they sending us the form so we can like get on? And it turns out for printers, really not. That was, um, that was, it turns out they sent them uh, four days ago. Let me just grab that. Um, they sent it four days ago, uh, but they put an E on the end of our surname. So our surname is Beale and it's B-E-A-L, but loads of people always put an E on and loads of people go, is there an E on the end? And everyone in our family, this the five of us, as well as Phil's more extended family, all have the same thing. Everyone goes, are you sure it's not got any on the end? I'm like, pretty sure I know how to smell my own smell, spell my own name. Um, it's very annoying. It never happened with my maiden name, but um, it was. I think people just assumed it's it's not really spelled in any other different ways. Um, so that's why they didn't get it. Didn't arrive. Um, didn't arrive a few days ago because they got the name. Got they put my email address with an E on the end. So I've got a big chunk of forms here, and I have I had a list of things that I was going to get done today, um, and I just was like. Stuff it! I'm filling out adoption forms! Uh, it won't take me very long because um, I know most of the stuff anyway. Like, um, one of the forms is a form that, you know, it's a standard form that's available. You can view it on the BAF Coram website. So I've already looked at it before because a little bit of a type A when it comes to things like this. So I'm going to get on and read all of this and fill it all in and then I'll tell you what it says. Hello, I finally finished the forms. I got a little bit caught up sorting out dinner and all of that kind of stuff. But I've um, organised everything into a folder. I feel like being as organised as possible uh, is the way to go. So as you see, it says stage one adoption paperwork. If anyone likes these cool folders, they're from Wilco, the Night Sky range. I got the whole stationery set because I thought I treated myself a little while ago. <laughs> and um, I'm glad I did it because I'm using it all for this now. So I've put in here um, our letter from the adoption service, the adoption agency saying, yeah, we would like to offer you this ROI. Um, there's some privacy stuff like the whole GDPR, how long they'll keep our stuff on record and things like that. And then there's the registration of interest form. Now if you're interested in having a look at the form to see what it's like, I'm not going to show you the one that I've done because obviously it's got all our personal information in it. But you can go to um, the Coram BAAF website and um, if you just search registration of interest form Coram BAAF uh, website. Um, a link, PDF link will come up and you can actually look the, and that's the exact same form that I've just filled in. So um, I, I know that I'm the kind of person who likes to know in advance what kind of forms I'm going to be filling in. Almost like so I can practice <laughs> in my mind. I just don't like surprises. So um, when it comes to admin stuff. So um, the first page um, it's asking us about our names, any other names that we've had. So I changed my middle name a couple of years ago um, from Louise to Lavender. Um, so obviously I go by Emma Lavender. Um, and uh, so I have to put in my name that was Emma Louise Beal. And then also put Emma Louise and then my maiden surname as well. So we've got our dates of birth, where we were born, phone numbers, email addresses, um, our address and how long we've lived here and our local authority, which is we live on the... Um, border between two local authorities like literally I could walk down the road right now and then jump between two counties like over the county line um, I used to do it when I was a kid because for some reason it was funny um, so but the we're the one that we actually live in is not the one that we've gone through we, we we did approach them and they came out for initial visit in March then they came for another visit in June which did not go but like and that the first one was on Zoom the second one was actually to our house to meet the children as well it didn't go well because the children were really anxious, especially Charles, um, and um, they said no for a host of reasons, which I might go into in another video, but, um... Excuse me. 
but yeah so we have to put down our local authority that we actually live in because they'll go and check with them so then we've put um our old addresses so we with the, like the house for us that was really simple because the house that we lived at beforehand we lived there for um for quite a long time um from when we just before we got married until a couple of years ago and then before then we lived with our parents so we just put down my parents address at the time and then the and phil's parents address um we've put that we are interested in doing foster for adoption or concurrent placements um then when we got married then it's our identity so our sex our nationality ethnicity primary language our religion um, our children's names and their schools i'll see you know they're home educated but we did put albert's preschool down um then the rest is like are there any other adults are there any other children do you have any children do you have any adult children so none of that applies to us then it's our jobs um what our work schedule is like who to contact obviously i'm a full-time mum but i am a rainbow leader so i've put my um leader in charge down as a employer reference because obviously i'm working with children that aren't, that aren't biologically my own children um then you know i'm just looking after them for an hour a week so obviously she can give me a reasonably good reference for what i'm like with children that aren't born to me um and then you've got phil's um phil's there and then like how long have we lived in the uk since birth um is anything going to come up in any checks that we do like county court judgments you know um family court that sort of thing um our doctor who our doctor is where our doctor's put surgery is their phone number um a couple of references and then we had to sign it to say um that it was fine and it said i understand that the agency will contact me within five working days of receiving my registration of interest um, my availability to contact you during this period is as follows and I put any date, any time and then put my mobile number um, and then we signed it and that's it and then we've got a separate form that isn't going to be found on our website because it's specifically I think for my um, for the agency that we're using and it says names and contact details of personal referees so um, they've asked for one family member and two non-family members for from both of us so like friends um, but then we've also asked to speak to our siblings so um i have technically two step brothers and a stepsister um you know my sister who i refer to as my sister she's not step anything uh, she's my full sister in my opinion um but my step brothers i don't really know them um i grew up a little bit with one of my step brothers but i haven't seen him in maybe five years maybe six years and the other one i've not seen since my wedding day so um yeah <laughs> they're not really I, I wouldn't know how to get hold of them anyway um because they're not they're not involved in our family at all anymore so we've got my parents and all of their details i've got my sister then i've got a uh almost lifelong friend of mine from school her name is charlotte we've known each other for 20 years and she's known phil all the time we've been married um so she lives really locally so she's agreed to be a reference which is great and then we have my friend um angie who's on here as well and we've known each other less a lot less than i've known charlotte but we are very very close um, and then another really good friend of mine karen um who does not live locally but they could speak to her on the phone if they needed to uh, she's the mother to our goddaughter so i kind of thought she's a brilliant person pause in my life you know she's um she's known me since she's known me for 14 years so yeah she's um and she knows phil as well and she knows phil's family as well because she used to be friends with his older brother so then for phil's family we've got his parents then we have to put all of his siblings in he has three siblings so um his sister and two brothers went on the form and then an old school friend also an ex-colleague because they went they worked together for a while um he's on there as well and then a great friend of both of us um i kind of call her although she's the same age as phil i kind of call her my surrogate daughter um she's uh, a very very special person to me and our relationship has that kind of dy dynamic i'm kind of like her mama but then i'm a mama to everybody but um it's more special for shell who um occasionally may appear she might have appeared in a video before i'm not sure but um she's very close to phil as well um we love her to bits so it's really really um, special that she's agreed to be a reference for us um and then we've got um a colleague of phil's who's known him the entire time he's worked at his current job which is um almost five and a half years now um and this this lovely chap is a dad um as well so um he knows he knows you know what kind of parents we are and um knows phil in like knows phil in a different environment to the other people who are on the list know phil if that makes sense he, they know him in a different environment 
so that's all those on there and then it's then the rest thing the last thing i folder is the report of our initial visit um obviously i've done a video on my initial visit so you know it from my point of view but she talks um, i'm not going to go into it because obviously it's quite personal to us but it talks about how we have four bedrooms in our house we have three children and um, the kind of things we like to do um how long we've been married when our children's birthdays are that we're close to our families uh that we were raised as christians but we don't identify as that anymore um that i'm a rainbow leader that phil's a funeral director um that the children are home educated that they go to forest school that we don't smoke we very rarely drink that we're fit and healthy um talks about our horses a little bit uh, the fact that we are adopting because we're choosing to we talked about how we're interested in early permanence and for those of you who don't know um i don't know a huge amount about it i know like enough from all of the things i've read on other people's um articles and blogs and channel and then listened on channels and stuff um because it's you know called foster to adopt or foster for adoption concurrency early permanence there's those different names for it but it basically if you're looking for a very young baby then early permanence is the way to go because otherwise you're going to be waiting until they're like six months old minimum if not older um we don't particularly we don't necessarily want a newborn like it's not something that you know we've been there we've done that we've done we, we we're really lucky to have three birth children so we've been there we've done that got three of the t-shirts and they're all stained with baby vomit um <laughs> but you know it is better for the child to be placed in their permanent home um as soon as possible which is why um we are considering it but also because um our children would it would be easier for them to deal with a newborn coming into the house that's more normal um it would reduce any attachment seeking behaviors that our birth children would give um obviously they are securely attached but they also two of them are autistic so they can have some anxiety which comes out as attention seeking behavior um, attention needing behavior um so yeah we talked about how we're happy to adopt a child who has disabilities or has unknowns who may or may not have a disability because obviously we're already parenting children to children with a disability so um disability <laughs> but uh, so it's not you know what's one more more the merrier we don't care neurodiverse people welcome here i should have a sign that says that outside my door um talks about our support network a little bit and then i will uh, read to you her the social worker analysis which really made me happy because um two years ago we tried to do this process um with one agency with two agencies one agency we came back to and they were the ones that said no again um and then another agency they said no but when we spoke to them recently they said come back in six months um and obviously this agency have said yes which obviously maybe they were meant to be maybe they were always meant to be who knows um but she said they have space within the home for another child um they manage on one income they are experienced parents who have spent years researching adoption and are well versed regarding the emotional literacy of an adopted child's narratives they are continuing to develop this understanding by independent research they have approached other agency um, who have chosen not to take them forward we would need to see the initial visit report as part of our statutory checks they are wanting to parent a child with some unknowns and are interested in early permanence they have spent time investing in developing their support networks they are child-centered in their approach um, and they also said in the above um, above thing that we that you know we are we have researched the needs of lo local authority care children and our parents to children with disabilities they are good advocates and i was like hell yeah i am um <laughs> sorry for the for the h bomb um for those of you who don't like it um yeah so that was a really lovely thing to read um i read through it today when it arrived and i got really emo i got really emosh um and jess was like i am so nice um, <laughs> just to have the forms they actually sent them to us um I can't believe they sent them to us and got our name wrong. Um, I still am laughing about that. I actually rang Philip at work and said, um, I bet you can't believe what I'm just about to tell you. They, um, they sent them to us on the first, but they spelled our name wrong. And um, yeah, he thought that was really funny, but with like a big, oh, of course they did. Because <laughs> everyone always spells our name wrong. So that's our ROI form, our registration of interest. Um, all I need to do now is hit send. Sent. <laughs> so 
so that's it it's sent it's sent it is on that it's there it's in their email box they will get it when they turn um when they get there in the morning they will see it <sighs> then um then yeah then it's then it's the beginning um then it's just a case of waiting for um for a social worker to get into contact with us we need to book medicals we need they'll send us forms to do our dbs checks both of us have current dbs checks so i don't think that will take very long um and then it'll be booking us onto training and getting our reference getting the references contacted so um yeah i'm excited mildly nervous about what the references are going to say i'm pretty sure that everyone's going to say like from a um parenting point of view that we're doing a good job and that we're perfectly capable but um, so I'm going to be I'm going to go to bed now I've got some videos to upload and then I'm going to go to bed because I'm tired I've got a long day of housework to do tomorrow because I didn't get anything done today um <laughs> I will see you on Friday for a family vlog thanks a lot bye